Hi guys, welcome back to the, to, uh, the Tomb of Illumination, Flat Earth Physics, discussing the expansion of our realm as you move south. Uh, what now? Now in his last video, this guy said he should get the Nobel Prize in Physics. Well, I don't know about that, but you should definitely get the dumbbell prize special officer duty reporting because today's video is just complete insanity from beginning to end so uh shall we shut up and sit down you big ball f please subscribe we um that guy took the boys to antarctica had a thing on youtube the other day the final discussion flat out discussion or something rather and um he showed one of the flat earthers this map here of Australia and then he showed them and he showed them this picture of Australia and asked them which one was real and the flat earther says that one it just goes to show that his flat earthers aren't onto it Onto what? The actual shape of the Earth. Now, the flat Earth model relies entirely on the premise that the globe is fake, fabricated by NASA evil NASA. Check out the merch store. So why would any flat earther point at a globe and say that's the real Australia? Because in doing so, he's accidentally debunked his entire belief system. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, well, you said it, not me. <laughs> that, that image there, in relation to arcs of longitude, is the exact same image as, as this in regards to arcs of longitude. Wait, so longitude lines, the ones that converge at the north and south poles on a globe, are the same as the ones on your magical space pizza map that just keeps getting wider until they hit the ice wall at the edge? Uh, that's not how geometry works, pal. That's like saying a straight line is the exact same thing as a curved one. It's not a debatable point. It's a geometry lesson you missed. And you brought your own visual aids to prove it to us. It's understanding the expansion of our realm from north to south and disbelieving the comedy of this. I mean, people believe they'll have been a ball. They're, they're, they're accepting that everything expands to the equator and then takes a, takes a bit of a rest on the way through the tropics because it doesn't expand anymore to the tropics and then gets to Kent's, uh, Capricorn and then decides, oh, we'll shrink back now. The distance between longitude lines is widest at the equator. It's about 69 miles per degree. <laughs> 69. Well, ha, ha, ha. And it shrinks to zero at the poles. It doesn't expand, take a break at the tropics, and then shrink. Does he think the people who accept we live on a globe also believe longitude lines expand and shrink? Because on their own flat Earth map, the lines of longitude literally expand to an ice wall and then just disappear. So he's projecting his own map's flaws onto ours and then getting mad about it. You just can't make this stuff up, can you? <laughs> You've got to be completely bonkers. Most people don't think, but this is consistent. It expands southward equidistantly. The azimuthal equidistant map isn't equidistant because its lines of longitude expand consistently. It's called that because it shows the distance and direction from a single central point, the North Pole. And on a globe, all lines of longitude converge at the poles. On the AE map, they just radiate out like spokes on a wheel that never meet. That's a fundamental inconsistency right there. Everything in the field expands. You, trees, land, whatever. Land's fixed. Terra firma, terra firma is fixed, but everything on it expands in the field because everything is of the light. Is he just casually dropping a brand new law of physics? The law of the up to the light expansion? What the hell is he talking about? Now, I didn't see that in any of my text box. If everything on fixed land is expanding, that means at some point we're all just going to start spilling over the edge, does it? Or maybe the trees will start punching through the atmosphere. The whole thing is a contradiction and it has no basis in anything. That's not science. That's just something you say when you don't have a clue. Walter Russell told us that. Electromagnetic ether. Oh, do you know, flat earthers aren't exactly great when it comes to using 
up to the date scientific arguments, are they? Walter Russell may have believed in an electromagnetic ether, but he was born in 1871, pal, and the scientific community disproved the existence of the ether with the Michelson Morley experiment in 1887, which showed there was no medium through which light travelled. And Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity in 1905, well, that officially laid the concept to rest. So you're just trying to use a centuries old, already debunked argument to try and prove your point. So, even the Bible it talks about it, in those days were giants, because the, the, the south, the, the talk referring to the southern hemisphere, comes north. And well, nothing says I'm confident in my position like citing the Bible and mythology to explain something which already has a simple scientific explanation. What you're doing is like using a cake recipe to explain how your car's engine works. The two things are completely unrelated and you look bonkers for even trying. You're not flying around the sun on a ball. No, the field shrinks in. The stars, the, star, the southern stars come north. You don't see them in the tropics overlaying the northern star till they get to the northern side of the tropics. Then there's the star overlays. This is the forming of the constellations. The reason we don't see the same constellations everywhere on Earth is because of the Earth's spherical shape. It's just a matter of perspective. Imagine you were stood in your backyard trying to look at the front of your house. You can't because the house is in the way. It's the same with the cosmos. People in the Northern Hemisphere can't see the Southern Cross because the curved Earth is blocking their view. So we're gonna talk about um, one of our patrons here, um, uh, Dustin, talking to a new AI called Claude. And he's trying to get to the bottom of this expansion, trying to understand it, right? So this is his question, doll, Claude. If I'm driving around a racetrack filming the crowd, so I've drawn this racetrack, because this is basically the same as the ecliptic plane. It's a circular racetrack. Right in the centre is the black hole. The first horse on the track off the, from the centre is the sun. Okay? And the, all the energy comes out of the centre. Like a clock, all the energy is from the centre, governed by the centre. So he's got the most energy. Oh, no thanks, I've just eaten. I couldn't manage a word salad. Look, all he's doing is taking a bunch of terms like ecliptic plane and black hole and just mashing them together with zero understanding of what they mean. The biggest flaw, though, is the idea that there's a black hole at the centre of our solar system. Funny how no astrophysicist has noticed. It's just not true. At the centre of our solar system is a star, the sun. A black hole is a region of space-time with gravity so strong that even light can't escape. It. And they do, and black holes don't generate or give energy, they consume everything around them. And they're trying to tell you all the background stars are quicker than this guy here on the inside track. It's comedy, mate. I've explained, the sun is the quickest, okay, even though on that Duffy show, I cocked up. The sun doesn't need to be quicker than the stars, it just appears quicker because we're orbiting around it. And the stars and constellations that are visible to us change throughout the year because we're on a globe orbiting the sun. Our perspective changes. It has nothing to do with them being on some magical imaginary racetrack. That's just another empty claim from an empty mind. So here's the racetrack, and he's talking about these two size tracks here. Now, so he's filming the crowd, and I'm driving fast enough to travel 360 degrees in a circle that is one mile one in one minute. Will I feel like I'm going the same speed if I travel 360 degrees in one minute, but traveled a 1.5 mile circuit? Ah, right, so you're trying to show us that the people who support you are just as stupid as you. Got it. But it is a perfect example of trying to use a flawed premise to prove an even more flawed conclusion. The answer to that question is a very simple and very definitive no. So in his hypothetical, you would absolutely not feel like you were going the same speed because the outer track is 50% longer. To complete it in the same amount of time, you would have to go 50% faster. And the answer is no, you won't feel like you're going the same speed. 
and they give a few reasons here. And one of them here is uh, they go on about what you'll feel in linear speed centripetal acceleration. I'm not understanding that centripetal acceleration. Yeah, we can tell. Centripetal acceleration is the acceleration you feel when you're moving in a circle, even if your speed is constant. It's not about getting faster or slower, it's about constantly changing direction. Kind of like what you would expect if we were living on a gigantic rotating sphere. If you're running around a circle, a small circle, you're only got centripetal, some sort of centripetal appearance, because you're finding your balance. You know, I love flat earthers because when they can't think of an intelligent answer, they just make something up or try to discredit an established scientific fact. Centripetal acceleration is not an illusion or an appearance, I think he said. It's a real acceleration. It's a direct consequence of an object's inertia being acted on by a real constant force that's pulling it towards the centre of a circle. Now, when you're driving your car on a circular on-ramp, you feel a force pushing you to the side of the car because you are literally being accelerated. So I don't know what they mean pulling. There's no centripetal pull. And what that means is you can't make it worth on your preferred flat earth model, whatever the hell that may be. So it must be fake. So discredit rather than try to disprove. It's all lies. When you work out the sun, the sun's a timekeeper. He governs the time and distance. Well, the sun's position in the sky is what defines our night and day here on Earth. A day is the time it takes for Earth to complete one full rotation on its axis. And as the Earth rotates, different parts of the planet face the sun, which is why we have time zones. And his claim that the sun governs distance is just pure nonsense. The sun does not decide how far away something is. Distance is a physical measurement, and it's completely separate from time. And his argument only makes sense on a rotating globe, which is the very thing he's trying to debunk. So he's accidentally proven our point for us. So, uh, thanks? because we associate it with the time it takes the sun to get over our arc of horizon. 180 degrees, how long does it take? So it work on 12 hours, check out my earlier videos, and it's all based on this nautical miles. He's invented a new kind of physics now where time is measured in nautical miles. That's a new one, even from a flat earther. We measure a day based on the time it takes our planet to complete one full 360 degree rotation on its axis. The sun appears to travel 180 degrees across our sky from sunrise to sunset because the earth is rotating, not because the sun is flying over our arc of horizon. A nautical mile is a unit of distance, you plumb, not time. It's used for navigation and it has absolutely no relationship to how long it takes the sun to move across the sky. You expand with the field. That's why they came up with the Mercator map and everything is all parallel, all larks of longitude are parallel. And that's a good representation of the size of you know, the continents and that. He's trying to use the Mercator projection as proof of his expanding field theory, but is this guy on something? Because the reality is the opposite. The Mercator map is famous for distorting sizes, especially near the poles. It was designed in 1569 for navigation. So another bit of up-to-date information from a flat earther. And it's great for sailors because it shows lines of constant compass bearing as straight lines. But it's a terrible map for showing the actual size of continents. For example, on the Mercator map, Greenland looks roughly the same size as Africa. But in reality, Africa is 14 times larger. But looking down as a whole, a plain view, you have to understand this. You have to understand the expansion. There is no expansion, you clown. And I'm not going through all the reasons why again. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Yeah, I forgot yesterday was a bank holiday in the UK, and that's why this video is a day late. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Oh, just quickly before you go, Mrs. Blinder suggested that we join a nudist group, so me being the good husband I am, I agreed. 
Got to be honest though, it's uh, not as easy as I thought it was going to be. In fact, it's been the hardest week of my life. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 